All right, so 2020 is looking like it's going to be a massive year for gaming. We've got some huge releases coming up over the next few months. And then by the end of the year as well, the new consoles will have been released. And uh, we haven't been able to say that in about seven years. It's been seven years since the this generation came out, basically. And next gen is coming by the end of 2020. And there's also going to be some huge launch games to come with that. So this list is subject to change, obviously. This is what my list is at the start of the year. Obviously, there's going to be games announced with release dates for PS5, PS, and Xbox Series X or whatever. Yeah, Xbox Series X is what it's called, right? Couldn't remember what it was called there for a second. I'm not going to be including games unless I'm pretty positive they're coming out in 2020, right? So I'm not going to be adding in any kind of guesswork and like games that I think might be coming out on launch for the PS5 and stuff like that. I'm just going with the games that I know. Most of them are going to be on PS4 as well. And uh, we're just going to jump into a top 10 list, basically. I do want to give a shout out uh, quickly to Hellblade. This would be probably in my top three most anticipated games uh, if... I was sure that it was going to be coming out in 2020. I'm not sure if that's going to be a launch game for the Xbox Series X or it's going to be a couple of months after release, maybe sometime at the start of 2021, something like that. That's kind of what I figure, but I could be wrong. It could come out in 2020, and if it is coming out in 2020, top three, okay? Because I loved the first Hellblade. I, I just put up my games of the decade on Twitter, my top 10 games of the decade on Twitter. Uh, if you want to follow me there, you can. Uh, I, it's the same as my YouTube channel, the Apex Sound. And I had Hellblade in the top 10. I had it at number 10, uh, which is quite a feat, you know? Over the last 10 years of gaming, Hellblade is in the top 10. So without further ado, let's get into the top 10 most anticipated games for 2020. Let's go. So, quick little honorable mention I wanted to give to Godfall, because I'm pretty sure that's a PS5 launch title. Uh, it does look cool, but I haven't seen enough of it. It kind of looks like a, a hack and slash, maybe, type game, but uh, the graphics look insane, and the gameplay did look fluid and fun. So, just a quick little shout out to that game before we get into the actual top 10. So I did just want to say as well, in this video, I won't be going too in-depth about each game. I'll just kind of be touching on what I think, uh, what I'm going to expect from these games, and then we'll be moving on. Because I, I just kind of want to give my thoughts on what I'm most excited for, and then maybe as the year goes along, do separate videos, kind of going in-depth of the games uh, that I am most excited for. If that's something you'd like to see, drop a like on this video, and uh, let me know in the comments. So let's jump in. So coming in at number 10 is Marvel's Avengers. This game comes out on May 15th, 2020, and it's coming out on PS4, Xbox One, Stadia, and PC. Uh, so it, it looks cool from what we've seen so far. There was a, bit, a little bit of a mixed reception, uh, basically because they're not the same characters as, as the Marvel Universe or whatever, but I didn't really expect them to be. That would cost way too much money, and uh, they probably don't want to blow all their budget just on getting Robert Downey Jr. to voice uh, Iron Man or something like that. But anyway, uh, the characters to me look pretty cool. Uh, you're going to play as Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, Black Widow, Thor, ha ha I was about to say Hank Guy, Hawk Guy, <laughs> and uh, Miss Marvel as well. Uh, I don't know if that's all the characters you play as, but those are all the announced ones. They have a couple of announced villains as well, like Abomination and Taskmaster, and they showed off some cool gameplay as well. It looked like there's a lot of QTEs involved, uh, but at the same time, it, it looked pretty badass, and the, the Black Widow versus Taskmaster fight, especially to me, was really cool. Uh, but flying around as Iron Man, playing as Thor, makes you look powerful. Uh, definitely excited to check this game out and see kind of whether it lives up to the hype that an Avengers game is going to bring and the sales that it's going to bring. For sure, it's going to sell a lot. No matter how good this game is, it's going to sell. So hopefully that it has the quality to match up the quantity of sales. It seems like the plot of the story is kind of Captain America dies. Uh, dies, I'm kind of putting that in quotations right now. I don't know if Captain America actually dies or not. That would kind of suck because he's my favorite character in the Marvel Universe. Uh, that would suck, but you do get to play as him before he dies, so that's great. Uh, but I, I don't think he's dead. I think it's going to be a shock. Yeah, he's going to be alive and yada, yada, yada. We'll see when the game comes out. Definitely excited to check it out May 15th. So May 15th, you'll get my thoughts on that game and uh, we'll see what it's like.
So coming in at number nine is Rainbow Six Quarantine. I was actually at E3 when this was announced, uh, when they done that kind of teaser trailer. It was a really intense and cool trailer. I didn't know what the hell it was at first, uh, but I was kind of figuring it might be something to do with Rainbow Six. I didn't know it was going to be a new game, like a separate game from Rainbow Six Siege, but it is. It's a completely separate game. It's a three-player tactical co-op game. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's actually being developed by an entirely new team as well at Ubisoft Montreal. Basically, the premise of the game they say is the Rainbow Six operators will face off against the mysterious threat infecting human hosts and their surroundings. So to me, I'm a big fan of Rainbow Six. Like, I love Rainbow Six. I've been getting back into it as well, and I've been playing a lot of it the last couple weeks since Christmas, basically, since before Christmas. Me and my friends are playing a shit ton of Rainbow Six together. I'm gonna plant the motherfucker. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Did that shoot me? What are you doing? What happened? <laughs> what happened? What have you done? Oh! Nice, Mac. Good job. Good job, Mac. Okay, so Max first having, time Max back. Max having a great. <laughs> what? <laughs> And uh, I'm just loving it. I, I, the game is so good. They've done so many updates and just done a great job overall of keeping this game alive as we go along. And it definitely has to be one of the best ongoing games. And that's kind of what excites me so much about this opportunity for them to do something single player wise. Because uh, it's been a minute since we've got like a Rainbow Six story. And this seems like that's what this is going to be. Uh, I'm excited to check it out. Definitely up there with the hype. We haven't seen enough for me to be truly very excited yet because I'm hoping it's not just kind of wave after wave after wave type gameplay. I'm hoping it's more of an actual game. But we'll see as time goes on. They were going to release this at the start of 2020, I believe within the first few months of 2020. But after their Ghost Recon debacle, they decided to delay all of their games. And I believe it's now coming out mid to late 2020. We will see. Maybe they'll delay it even to the new consoles. But I hope not. I hope we get it before then. And uh, we can play through with a couple of friends. Anyway, that is Rainbow Six Quarantine. Very excited for it. I mean, obviously I'm very excited for it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have it on my goddamn list. So coming in at number eight is Half-Life Alex. Now this is a VR only game. I do actually have a HTC Vive. I haven't used it in probably like a year. I think since I moved into my new apartment, I haven't uh, used it because I just haven't been bothered to set it up. I kind of am in a small room for my office. I don't think I have enough space. But for Half-Life Alex, I really have to get this thing back out and set up. And that's coming out in March 2020. So I have uh, three months to set it up and get ready for Half-Life Alex on the Vive. It's also coming out on other VR platforms as well. I'm not sure exactly which one. Probably Oculus and some of the other ones. I, I don't even know what VR platforms are out there anymore. I only know Oculus, HTC Vive, and PlayStation VR. But it's not coming to PlayStation VR, obviously, because it's a, a PC-centric thing. Anyway, let's kind of get into the game itself a little bit. It's an upcoming virtual reality first-person shooter uh, developed and published by Valve, obviously, the creators of Half-Life and Half-Life 2. Uh, it takes place before the events of Half-Life 2, so it's a prequel to Half-Life 2. And you control Alex Vance as she and her father, Eli, fight the occupying alien combine. From what we've seen so far, it looks to be taking VR. Uh, to the next level it looks awesome there's a lot of cool vr experiences out there but i'm not sure there's any real like uh, full games of this quality and we'll see if this is going to bring new people over to the vr world i'm sure that it will people will just be it will be too much of a task to turn down playing another half-life game so i'm sure there'll be some people getting their first vr headset just to play this game alone and that's what uh, valve are trying to do here they're trying to make this a flagship title for vr and i think that is exactly what it'll be it'll be great um for vr in general and I, I, people roast me the way I say VR, okay? That's literally the way we say or in Ireland, okay? Uh, I don't say R or whatever. I know people say R. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know. I, anyway, whatever. Who gives a shit, okay? <laughs> I'm Irish. Let me off the hook. Yeah, it's crazy that game is coming so soon after being announced. And we will see it very, very soon within the next couple of months. Anyway, moving on to the next game on the list coming in at number seven is Halo Infinite. Now, if you've been following my channel, you'll know that I've been playing the Halo games recently. I played Halo Reach. I've been playing Halo 3 ODST. I've only played like the first hour of that game. I still need to get back to that and continue that playthrough on my channel. Uh, but back a 
a few years ago when the Master Chief Collection first came out, that's when I actually first played the Halo games because I was always a PlayStation kid growing up. But I really like the campaigns. I've never got into the multiplayer of Halo. I know that's where it shines and people really loved the multiplayer back in the day. Uh, but to me, the campaigns are great as well. Halo 2 campaign especially was really good. Halo 3 was good. I haven't really liked the new ones as much. So I'm hoping that Halo Infinite can turn things around and make me excited to, to play Halo again. Uh, because I, I really enjoy playing Reach as well, just recently. Like, I played Reach uh, last month, I believe, and I loved it. It was such an emotional ride. Uh, it was it was great. Um, but obviously, with upgraded gameplay and everything, I think that Halo Infinite could make a mark. So if Halo is a big success and a great game, Halo Infinite, then that will obviously help the success of the Xbox Series X as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to check it out. It looks cool from the the glimpse we got of it it's a trailer it's not really anything gameplay related uh, but anyway we'll see more of halo infinite at e3 and upcoming uh, conventions i am sure and i definitely assume that that will be a launch title i i would be surprised if halo infinite was not a launch title with the xbox series x i think they might have confirmed already that it is but uh, i'm not sure all right, so moving on, coming in at number six is the Resident Evil 3 remake. Now, until Resident Evil 7, I had never played a Resident Evil game. I never played one, which is kind of crazy to think about considering how big those games were when I was growing up. But I don't know, I just never got into them. I was never the biggest horror fan, I guess, growing up. But to be honest, when I was growing up, I did play Dead Space. Like, Dead Space are my favorite horror games of all time, without a doubt. Dead Space 1 and 2, incredible. Dead Space 3, Eh, it's good, but it's not as good. They kind of went in the new direction that people didn't really like as much. And uh, uh, But Dead Space 1 and 2 are two of my favorite horror games. Then I played Resident Evil 7, and I really liked it. That was my first experience with a Resident Evil game, as I said. And I, I did really enjoy that game, the kind of mindfuck that it would put you through, and the crazy and wacky story. Uh, but then after that, I decided when they were doing the Resident Evil 2 remake, I'd check Resident Evil 2 out for sure. The remake, obviously, I didn't play the original. But I fell in love with the Resident Evil 2 remake. I really did, and that's why I'm so excited for Resident Evil 3. Obviously, it's going to have the similar controls to the Resident Evil 2 remake. It seems like this nemesis dude, not going to be a fun time. But I'm definitely excited to check this game out. It's coming out, I believe, in March. Sorry, it's not coming out in March. It's coming out on April 3rd, 2020. And I'm excited to shit my pants, man. It's set like simultaneously with Resident Evil 2, I believe, or something like that. Or it's set just before the events of Resident Evil 2. Uh, which is cool, and also I believe I heard they're going to be trying to make a couple more changes than they did with Resident Evil 2 um, to kind of make it more modern. I hope they don't go too far from the source material, I guess, um, just because I feel like Resident Evil 2 had that perfect balance, but we'll see. We'll see what they do. I'm excited to check it out in April. All right, we're getting into the top five now. So kicking off the top five is Ghost of Tsushima, which kind of got a little bit of a delay when The Last of Us got a delay. So it's coming out now in quarter two slash quarter three, 2020. I assume just before it will come out a few months before, maybe in like August or July. I, I assume maybe August, September kind of way. But anyway, Ghost of Tsushima looks great. It's Sucker Punch's first game in like four to five years. It's been a hot minute since we've got a Sucker Punch game. It might even be longer than that, to be honest. But it's an open world game set in 1270, I believe. The 1270s, at least. It's about the first Mongol invasion of Japan. But we have seen a little bit of gameplay. We haven't seen much of the game recently. We saw a trailer, but they didn't really show any gameplay. They put in a little bit of gameplay, like a kind of couple little moments there, but there was nothing too crazy i'm hoping we see more of this game soon because it is coming out towards the end of the ps4 life cycle i hope that doesn't affect it sales wise i hope that the game doesn't get shafted because of that right but there has been scenarios where it has been successful a la the last of us but they did do a remaster the gameplay that they did show of ghost of tsushima though looks amazing it looks to me kind of what like a modern assassin's creed should look like uh, but uh, just gameplay wise i'm not speaking about setting wise or anything like that obviously but the stealth aspect and the kind of taking people down, the sword fighting looks amazing. Just appeals a lot more to me than kind of the, the route that Assassin's Creed has gone in the RPG kind of 
I don't know, I feel like every game is going that route, the open world RPG, and I'm like, I'm kind of sick of it at this stage, but this game, it, it is open world, but it's definitely not an RPG, and it looks incredible gameplay-wise, I can't wait to get in and cut some heads off and slice some people up, but yeah, hopefully another masterclass in storytelling from Sony again, that would be great if the story on top of the gameplay was awesome, you know, that would turn out for a pretty great game. Anyway, uh, we're moving into the next four games i have seen i'm kind of biased because i have seen three of these next four games behind closed doors at e3 but i guess that kind of gives me a new perspective on why i'm excited for these games i've actually even played this next one coming in at number four watchdogs legion i played this for about an hour at e3 and I, I really enjoyed it and i thought that i wasn't expecting to like watchdogs legion as much as i did and i wasn't expecting it to look so cool so it's set in a fictionalized london where the government has kind of taken control of everything and you're everyone's losing their freedom and you are part of a hacker group called deadsec uh, there's no respawn so if you die your character is dead but you have multiple characters which i think is such a great idea you can also recruit any character in the world to DeadSec, which is in the world of, well, I don't mean in the world, but in London, in the game. <laughs> you know what I meant anyway. And each character has their own background and skill set to provide kind of an influence on the game, I guess. And uh, so uh, I don't know how this will work for the narrative of the game. I'm hoping it doesn't affect it too deeply because it seems like, I don't know, it, it seems like it would be hard to create a story around any character right i don't know we'll see how it works i'm a little bit apprehensive about the story of the game but also the gameplay what i played was incredibly fun the different way you can do things you can do things stealthy you can go in guns blazing uh, but just the different kind of variety of weapons and tactics you have with what you can hack and what kind of vehicles you can get you can get kind of drones as well that go in there and do a job spider drones uh, actual tank drones there's all sorts of different things that you can do uh, which kind of opens up new paths uh, to completing a mission which is really cool this game was scheduled to come out um, in March I think it was scheduled to come out March the 3rd but as I said this is the second Ubisoft game they delayed all of their games and it's now going to be coming out in the 21 20 when i was about to say 20 when won last last week i said 20 tenny and this week i said 20 when he <laughs> like what is wrong with me god damn it the 2021 fiscal year which uh, begins april 1st 2020 so i assume it's still going to come out before the life cycle of ps4 or ps5 and xbox series x but you never know it might actually be maybe a launch title for those consoles or it might come out a little bit after we we don't know we shall see renly come the dawn we shall see so kicking off the top three is dying light 2 this is a sequel to a super underrated game in my opinion i feel like dying light doesn't get the praise that it deserves but this next one looks like it has taken a massive step up and i have seen this behind closed doors it does look absolutely incredible i saw about maybe 45 50 minutes of gameplay of dying light 2 and I was really impressed. I really feel like this can be a game of the year candidate. And it's coming out in spring 2020. It seems like choices are a lot more prevalent in this game. It's set 15 years after Dying Light. You're playing as a new guy called Aiden Caldwell. Who obviously has massive parkour skills. Because parkour is a huge part of the Dying Light universe. Also the parkour looked a lot more in depth. There's now a grappling hook and a paraglider. Uh, that you can use to traverse the world. Which looked incredible. Incredible. I think they've actually shown the gameplay demo that they showed us behind closed doors to the public now and they kind of started it off with a little bit of backstory introducing us to the characters and then after that there was a little bit of a chase where they showed off the parkour and it really was impressive with the grappling hook and the paraglider and they really did kind of emphasize how important your choices are in this game there's a lot of different routes you can take in this game like there's certain areas that will never even open up to you based on your decisions like you may go through this game without opening up these kind of open world areas which i think is a really cool premise of the game like your decisions really do matter in this world and they showed that in this demo as well like based on the allies that you choose and the decisions that you make it really impacts the the outcome of the story that you're involved in 
The gameplay looks brutal. They were cutting heads off. They were <laughs> doing all sorts of shit. It looks brutal. It looks fun. And it looks like a, a brilliant continuation from Dying Light. I'm very excited to check this game out. You can probably guess my top two right now. But coming in at number two is Cyberpunk 2077. A new IP from CD Projekt Red who obviously made the Witcher games, which are some of my favorite RPGs. I love those games. I love the Witcher world, the universe. So I'm excited to see what they create with Cyberpunk. So far, it looks amazing. It's played in a first person perspective. You play as a character named V, whether it's male or female. You choose what the hell you want to be, what you want to look like. Obviously, there's going to be tons of different customization and modifications because it is is a cyberpunk dystopian universe there's also different classes like hacking machinery combat classes and there's obviously all the normal stuff of an rpg like a perk tree and uh, different kind of implants you can put in in yourself which is more in line with cyberpunk uh, basically like military upgrades to your body so it's set in an open world night city which is in California. It has six regions, and all of the regions are kind of like different in the way that they are. There's like a, a wealthy region. There's like an immigrant inhabited region. There's gang infested regions. And I'm really excited to kind of check these out and see how different each region really is. It seems like there's going to be slum regions, like just rich regions. There's obviously only six regions, but I think that the difference in them is going to be incredible. And I can't wait to scope them all out, honestly. Obviously, as well, as I was talking about in Dying Light, your decisions in this game are obviously going to matter as well. This is an RPG. I'm just really excited to explore the world of cyberpunk. And I know that the story is going to be great as well because cd project red only make great stories i just i'm really excited to delve into cyberpunk 2077 and we don't have to wait that long because it's coming out on the 16th of april which is just over four months away i'm ready to be blown away by this world and if you haven't seen any of the gameplay or the trailers for this game then i'd highly recommend checking them out i will have some gameplay or trailers up in the back of the background of this video but kind of just to get the full scope of the game i'd go and check them out now coming in at number one is the last of us part two i couldn't not have this game at number one i just love the first one so so much dude i really do i actually had it at number two in my games of the decade after uncharted 4 if you saw my tweet you would have known that but uh yeah last of us part two is my most anticipated game of the next decade <laughs> and it's coming out may 29th there was a slight delay but that's okay i'm i'm okay with that there's so many games to play between march april and may it's coming out the end of may hopefully uh i'll be done with cyberpunk by then probably not considering how long and kind of fruitful that game is going to be there's going to be so much to do in that game but last was part two uh, i want to just fully delve into it and only be playing that game at the time i don't want to be playing anything else i just want to focus completely on the last of part two just see what's happening in the world see what's happening with ellie what's happening with joel i just want to know is joel okay is joel okay i swear to god if they hurt joel if they hurt joel there's going to be a problem there's going to be a big, big problem between me and Naughty Dog if they hurt Joel. So if you didn't know, The Last of Us Part 2 is set five years after the events of The Last of Us. Uh, the crazy ending to The Last of Us, the emotional ending, the kind of just shocking ending, I would say. Um, and you control a 19-year-old Ellie now. Kind of crazy. She looks great in the game. Her character model looks insane. Joel looks a hell of a lot older. He definitely looks like he's aged more than five years. But I'm just so, so excited to see if Naughty Dog can match the first game or even top the first game. Obviously, it's going to be incredibly hard to do given how good The Last of Us was. But if anyone can do it, Naughty Dog can do it. I feel like they've done an, the absolute perfect job of finishing off Uncharted 4. And I don't think there's going to be another Last of Us game after this one. I really don't. I think that this is going to be the last Last of Us game. The last Last of Us game. And I think it's going to finish off on a crazy note. But enough rambling. That's my most anticipated game of 2020 and those are my top 10 most anticipated games of 2020 let me know what you thought of the video let me know your most anticipated games maybe your top three if you don't want to do a top 10 if you want to do a top 10 do a top 10 let me know in the comments i'd love to get all your guys opinions and see the different opinions that everyone has uh, because i know 
opinions in gaming differ quite a lot. So I know that there's going to be some strange lists out there. Maybe you guys think my list is strange. But uh, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys for more content in the very near future. If you want to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, I'll join the Discord, all that kind of stuff. You can do so in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. All right, guys, so I just wanted to take a minute to thank my members at the end of each video. Uh, I really appreciate the support. I've got a few new members recently, and uh, coming in at the puppy tier, which is the 199 tier, I have MDG, aka my boy Jack, and I've got Rob Deaton. Didn't, I think he was saying his name is pronounced, but anyway, uh, those that's the puppy level. And then coming in at the hound level, which is the standard 499 level, I have Brent Clapper, I have Leanne, Peter. Pico, Daxman, Thiago Silva, Game Riot, and Maximus Primus, and Rocky Hulatang. I'm just going to say Rocky because I don't know if I'm saying your second name right. And then coming in at the Wolf level, which is the 999 tier, uh, including two new members, we've got UG Outlaw, we've got Sylvan Jamies, Anthony Roberts, and Casey Woods. So thank you all for being members of the channel. It really does mean a lot. You get uh, access to the emotes, you get a badge next to your name, and you get shout out in the end of each video like this, and also in the description of the video. So thank you all, and I'll see you next time.